Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geoecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as we are going to complete each and every topic related to geography on this channel. Now in this session on population geography, we are going to learn today about the demographic attributes. So when we say attribute, it basically means what? It means the quality which is associated, which is ascribed to the demography, the study of population. So in this session, we are going to discuss about it. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about demographic attributes. When we say demography, it's basically the study of population and its various aspects. And when we say attributes, basically it means what? The quality which is ascribed or associated or what we say is the nature or characteristics of demography. So how do we understand it? It's important to look into it. So now categorically, if we look into the two aspects of population, that is two attributes can be grouped into two segments like numerical attributes that is in terms of numbers, quantitative and structural attributes, which is about the age distribution, dispersal patterns, migration and other forms of growth. Now, when we say these are the two major segments, it's important to also look into each one of them that what does it comprise of? So first important thing is to learn about the numerical attributes of the demographic attribute segment. Now, density, natality, mortality and dispersal. Remember this DNMD. If you can remember the short form, DNMD is basically what? It is the numerical part or the quantitative part of this demographic attribute. Right. So density is individuals per unit area. Natality is the birth rate, which we have discussed in previous sessions. Also death rate also we have discussed and dispersal. It is the rate at which individuals move or a population change through immigration or immigration from an area or into an area that we know. Right. So these are the numbers form, the quantitative aspects of the demographic attributes. And the next one is structural attributes. Now, what is structural attribute? If you look into this graph, you can understand it is talking about a pattern, a pattern with time and space connotation. That's where the geographical connotation comes into the picture. The population growth forms in terms of the changes, in terms of the growth and also dispersal of individuals in space. That's where spatial component is and age and sex distribution and various other distributions which we talked in the previous sessions. So if you have not watched the previous sessions on population geography, all these things have been in detail in separate videos. It has been already discussed. Now what we are looking in this lecture is about the connotations associated with the attributes of population or demography, right? So this is about the structural attribute. Now the next question is how to understand demographic characteristics or attributes in simple ways in a very comprehensive manner. So now the demographic attributes or characteristics are what basically these are those characteristics that describe the differences. Now catch word here is differences, the distinction, the uniqueness, right? In a society based on gender, age, occupation, levels of education, religion, ethnicity, income, family type, marital status, geographical location, social class. So look into these factors. These are several parts which compile the whole of what we look into the demographic characteristics of a place, right? So four main attributes if we look into, if we want to look into in a simple way, how can we do it? In four simple ways or four pillars of demographic attributes are what? First one is the size of population, right? The amount is the most frequently used demographic measure. Then the next one is distribution, the second important pillar. And then what we have is the structure, right? It is basically the known values, known characteristics, which talks about a region, a particular space and time, how it has grown over, what is the spatial pattern. And then we know the change. The fourth important pillar is what we look into the time conditions through time and space, how it changes. So size, distribution, structure and change are four pillars of demographic attributes and under which we can group several others. So if you want to look into the five big picture of demographic variables based on these attributes, what are those? Look into it. The first one is fertility. 
So we have talked about fertility in the previous sessions in the beginnings of the population geography. So among demographers, among population geographers, fertility is a topic that gets most attention because this is the prime part of where we look into population geography. Why? Because it is a deterministic factor. It determines the population structure. High fertility is responsible for population explosion across the world. So fertility is the first important point, right? Then the next is mortality, just the other aspects, that is the death of people, right? So death cases in large numbers are related to social, economic, environmental and several other ch challenges around the world that we already talked about. Then what is the third one? That is major demographic variable, marriage. Because marriages across the world are one of the vital factors because they are the triggers for population growth, for the birth, right? That is what is the prime consideration. Right? So marriage influences the fertility, mortality and even migration that we know, especially amongst women. Right? Then what we have talked about is the migration and separately as I told you that migration and its related theories in the lectures to come, we'll be talking about it in separate details. But here we are looking into the five major variables. So migration, that is emigration, immigration, all of them have an important role to play. And what else? Social mobility. So what is the social mobility? It's about the world movement, the social transition. When we, when we say social, it means it has a connotation which is not individualistic. It's about the interlinkages of individuals, the families, the kith and kins, right? That's where society exists. So what is the social mobility and what are the factors associated with it? For example, what happened to social mobility after industrial revolution? Literacy, urbanization, secularization, growing consumerism. Every time we see these factors coming into play, society has a change. Social mobility is this change that we're looking through, right? So it impacts hugely to the population growth or that is what we say is the demographic variable. So if you're looking into the demographic attributes, what is the variable? What is the data that we need to collect is these five big picture data, right? If we know these five factors, we can talk about the demographic attributes of quantitative as well as the qualitative nature, both of them. Now, why demographic attributes are so important? Why do we need to learn it? So demography basically is an interdisciplinary science. As we know, demography is something associated with various other disciplines like statistics, geography, economics, health and several others. So it has a very important role. If we don't know these factors, if we don't need these attributes, we will be at loss, we will not be able to comprehend what is happening in around the world. So because it is a dependent study, it's always been part of the history. Remember demography's studies is not new, right? From Greeks and Romans to our own ancient Indian civilizations, every time demography used to be the basis of every decision making, right? So developed countries always pay attention to it. And remember, they keep their population in balance through their laws, through their policies. So what we look into is the various reasons why it is important. So the first reason is learning the quantity, quality and distribution. Remember these three things of residence in a region. This is the first reason. If you don't know the quality, how will you plan? How will you reap the dividends of those people around that? So demographic characteristics like quantity, quality and distribution is the first part. That is the first reason why we should learn about it. Then what is the second reason? Explaining population conditions in the present or past conditions, the quality, right? So size, distribution, structure, change, economic, health, education, all these things, the qualitative aspect also is gained through this. That's why it becomes important to learn. Then what about the third important reason? Knowing the causal relationship, cause effect. What is the reason? What is the effect consequences? So these variables will tell us what is the causal relationship of variables that affect population growth. Why growth is concentrated somewhere? Why growth is dispersed somewhere? Why there is explosion of growth in developing countries and third world? What is the challenges in the developed countries? So all these things will only be learning. That's why it's important to know this, right? And then what we learn further is the predicting of future. So if you want to look into the trend analysis and say where the world is heading to in 2030, when we want to achieve sustainable development goals, what will be the situation in 2050? What will be the situation at the end of 21st century? 
this is where the projection lies and projection can only be given on the basis of present study and past study that's why future population growth studies and projections are very important for us because we need to plan we need to ensure our sustenance on this planet right so fertility mortality and migration are the main causes for society changing and we need to study its size and distribution and then we can predict and project the size of population right that is what we have learned through entire theories of demographic transition and several others right in the models and theories in geography when we talked about it so what you look into the fifth one is one of the most important reason is the basis of appropriate policy making in the field of population now understand that policy making would only cater to people and if you don't know the quality of people if you don't know the quantity of people their quality of life their issues challenges how are we going to plan and make policies so to make policy it's also important that this knowledge is there the demographic attributes its variations its changes all these aspects must be there in position so fair policy that is based on equality and equity principle has to be done only if you know about it demographic characteristic is one of the most contributing factors in decision making across the world that's why there is a reason to learn about it then what we look here is several demographic characteristics grouped under several heads now this is a very objective looking study that we are doing here that demographic characteristics can be grouped in what ways first could be geographical characteristics of demography what is it place of usual residence place of birth place of previous residence urban and rural this is geographical then demographic and social characteristics are gender marital status age religion ethnicity then further if you look into fertility characteristics children ever born alive children living age date duration of first marriage birth planning age of mother at first child born then mortality characteristics is household deaths infant deaths household characteristics of demographic attributes are floor area floor type type of roof type of wall if you look into census of india you'll get all such data this is how we are grouping it that's where we say demographic variables right characteristics of technology uses smartphone internet internet expenditure right so this is what we look into then further what we observe we are looking into the seventh one is educational characteristics that is level of school participation literacy dropout field of education and one more is disability characteristics as well of the population like visual hearing physical conditions and economic characteristics that is last but not the least most important because population and economy economic conditions economic development that's already discussed in so much of details in economic geography playlist so income so monthly or weekly expenditures assets all these nine groups are basically what this is what we look into the sub demographic attributes under the major heads that we look into right so why is it important how it is important how to be understand it in simple ways this is what we have discussed so in conclusion three more things to be remembered demographic attribute give us global perspective not just local but a world perspective world view of what is happening today what happened earlier and what could be happening in future then supporting by empirical and evidence based data along all these attributes demography contributes to the betterment of society we are all planning for we are all longing for the betterment of the society isn't it and then it's an interdisciplinary field it means what not just the demographers or geographers but everybody else also benefits by these kind of researches these kind of studies right so if demographic attributes are well computed well known statistically tools are well explaining the situation it means what it will be helpful for others as well for example we can use the data in economics sociology anthropology mathematics statistics and of course population geography is a huge discipline of its own right that's why we say that demographic attributes are very important for each one of us for across the disciplines across the sections of the society everybody must be aware about the basic aspects of these demographic attributes and especially the academicians and scholars and administrators must be aware about the nuances the little things associated with these demographic variables so that we could make a better future so now when we have discussed in details about the various aspects of demographic attributes in this session in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of population like migration its theories and several others but before we go ahead don't forget to subscribe and also share this channel and videos with others as well